just hope to keep working. That's what I've always said. You know, I just take one job at a time. And eventually when I'm 90, you can look back and go, oh, so that's what a career was. It was never intentional to do sequels. Going into something like this, you don't understand what it was gonna be, especially on the first one. You don't understand how big it turned out to be. You can't be that arrogant. I even looked at the auditions. If I didn't even get the job, I'd worked with Jim Cameron. That's how I looked at it, just as a process of, well, I'm working with a guy that revolutionizes movie making. He's a great storyteller. And how can I be a cog or a soldier in his system? So pretty much say five years from when the first movie came out. Jim went down to the Mariana Trench, as you do on your weekends, came back and said, I, I want to expand the world and expand Pandora. Then he went and got a writer's room with all these top writers to try and crack a way in. And said, until we work out what that may be, there's no point writing. You can come up with great set pieces and come up with great ideas of where movies can go and the exploration of Pandora, but you gotta find that essence. And personally, I think that essence is about, the movie was about a young kid trying to fit in. We're all trying to find our tribes. We're all trying to find the click. You know, it says in the first movie, open your eyes. You know, that's what he's saying. That's the motif, you know, find something worth fighting for. And the second movie is about protecting all of that, what he found. And so that's why I think the first movie connected because we're all just trying to connect. And then I think we went off and had kids and I think that kind of triggered something in him about his own family and his own children. And therefore this saga is about this family that continues across these four more films. And there's an extension of the original love story that was in the first one. But you get to explore more of the world and explore more of these people. I just want to keep my family safe. Nobody's ever attempted to do underwater motion capture. The idea was how are we going to do this and not kill the actors. So, you know, you learn a technique where you slow down your breathing, slow down your mind, add more oxygen into your body than you normally get. And then you drop 30 feet down and do scenes. That's the basic way of saying it. To explain it, I find very difficult because it's very complex because we spent months and months training to do it. And to sum it up is very hard, but it's also the most freeing and easiest thing in the world because you have to yield to it or you die. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, that's the way I approached it. If you want to live here, you have to ride. Let's do it. The way gym works is you have big blocks. So we did about a year and a half, two year block. I started in 2017. Then they went and did another two years. They COVID interrupted some, but they kept going. And they're still going. Four weeks out, he's still filming, still doing stuff. About 80% shot of three from what I remember. I know it's getting rendered. And in four, we had to do some scenes because the kids are aging out. So he wanted them at a certain age. So then when we go back, they would have grown another five years, which is in line with the way the story takes it. You know, Jim said it, if the, if the second or third one are embraced, also known as if they make money, then yeah, then we understand that there's an audience and you go ahead into four and five. We've done a couple of scenes of four already. Me, Zoe, Stephen Lang and Sigourney know where this story goes across all of them. Yeah, it just depends on how well number two is received. We must protect the people. Let's get it done. We learned from the first one that we, we do it in two spaces. So we have, they call them volumes. So we have a, a gray, big gray basketball court, basically empty. And then we have the underwater version of that. Now to make the process work, if you're pushing through a rainforest, the mechanics of your body actually touching something changes if there's something actually there. All right, so we look at the scene and decide what we need. So if I'm cleaning a fish, I'm not gonna imaginarily do it. We go down to the deli and get a fish and I cut a fish. We push through trees, we bring in branches, and push through the branch because the mechanics of your body has the reality to it, translates into the system and gives us the reality on screen. That's the difference between our movie and any other movie. So if you're underwater, it's the same thing. So you could do that on wires on dry land, but the mechanics of the body 
won't look right or won't viscerally feel right when it's coming at you off the screen. So we're putting us underwater for real. They just viscerally know that person just by the mechanics of the body because it's so common to us. We'll understand that they're literally there. So we try to build into each volume anything that's required for the scene, be it explosions, be it slippery floor, be it uh, food, be it anything, a wind. And that's the highlight of the day is because you're going into these scenes not fully understanding and Jim certainly not fully knowing what we need to make the scene tangible and real. We know what tangible and real is from a motion point of view, but not necessarily from a practical point of view. And that's, it's like kids in a big play area, play pit. Even when you're underwater, your performance is tracked. So every eye flicker, every breath, every smile translates through the system underwater. Yeah, and look, Sigourney plays my 14 year old daughter. So Sigourney's of a certain age, so she'd never get that opportunity to approach a character that way. And yeah, when you're doing the scene, she looks like Sigourney in her performance capture suit with the dots on and our head cameras, but she has that essence. And then what we're seeing translated back is, yeah, she's 14. She's got the mannerisms that she's projecting and the, the technology allows her to immerse herself in a character that she would never ever get the opportunity to inhabit. Performance capture is just makeup. That's what it is just on an advanced digital level. The idea is to disappear into character. So this is like the awesome version of that. I get to be nine foot tall, have a tail and ears and be blue from another planet. I did a movie once where we did that with prosthetics and it was a disaster and it was awful. <laughs> and I remember I phoned Jim up and said, Jim, I don't know what the fuck I've done here, man, but check out this. And he said, what are you doing, you idiot? You know, it looks stupid, I told you. Like, <laughs> this is the future. <laughs>